Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here, back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory. We're at the end of another week, which of course means we're going to get the weekly wheel spin. Hopefully we can get something decent from that. And as you can see on the screen just there, we've got some New Year's Resolution Packs. Sadly, it's not a Spotlight Series set. I was really hoping it would be for today. Uh, 2K dropped a trailer last night of Rajon's Rondo card, so obviously everyone just thought he was going to be the Spotlight Series, but for some reason he is not. He's just a normal, uh, I think he's a diamond or a pink diamond in this set. I can't actually remember, but anyway, we'll get onto that in a bit. So, on this wheel, we have got some good stuff and some absolutely horrendous stuff. So two diamond contract or two diamond consumables packs, that'd be fantastic. 60 tokens, 20 tokens, that'd be great. The Ruby Jew Drew Holiday would be the worst thing in the world to get, along with that diamond cons or the normal consumables pack, I think, right there. And then 2,500 MT wouldn't be great either. So let's see what we're going to get. I don't really think you can try and aim it, but it looks like we are going to get... Di oh, don't do it. Oh, that is just... Oh, don't do it. Hey, okay, what is this board? What is that? <laughs> no idea. What just happened right there? But thankfully, it spared us of the disappointment of a Drew Holiday, and we do get a pack out of it at least, so that is better than nothing, so we'll open that in a second. We've got the locker code. Uh, what is your favourite mode in my team right now? My team are unlimited, triple their online, offline challenges, or just give me tokens. Just give me tokens, right? Uh, it's definitely not going to be unlimited, but we only get two, uh, so I think it's the same as the rest of them, but uh, you can see there people saying that triples are online and offline is their favourite. My team unlimited more than challenges, which is probably just because it is online rather than offline, but yeah, interesting nonetheless. Uh, we are going to get new weekly challenges tomorrow. Hopefully we get something that's half decent. The daily ones today, we've got one domination, uh, which isn't actually bad. 600 MT just for with three bucks players, not bad. Uh, and then two triple threat ones, uh, which we're probably not going to get to any time soon. And the limited time event today isn't actually that bad. A two times MT uh, multiplier when ball drops in triple threat online. That's not actually too bad. And we just need that, but for tokens, and then that is a triple threat online limited time event that I really, really want, but hopefully we get that in the next couple of weeks, or a couple of days, really. Uh, so we've got new weekly challenges, of course, which is just good for another six tokens. Moment challenges, again, absolutely nothing. There's been nothing for so long, and again, no spotlight challenges, which is a big, big shame. We do, however, well, we don't even have new multiplayer challenges yet. What is that? They usually come on Fridays, and uh, maybe they come in a little bit, so not just yet. So we've got two packs to open up. We've got the uh, contract pack, of course, from logging in, and then the Prime, uh, who is it, Bernard King pack, I believe. Contract packs are brilliant, by the way. I'm really happy about getting them. Uh, yeah, Bernard King Legacy Showcase Series 1. I've no idea who else is in this set, so if it is an Amethyst or above, which it is, of course, not, we just get a normal Miles Turner, so absolutely nothing exciting going on in that pack. But some of the players that actually dropped today are reasonably exciting. It is a shame that we don't actually have any new content to actually play. Um, what has been going on here? So we've sold a few things by the looks of it. Uh, we've been outbid on a couple of cards, and we've won a couple of cards as well. So looks like we won a Devontae Graham and an Aaron Baines. I have no idea what I would have bid on them, but probably like 2,500 MT. So we probably got them for a decent price, and we're still sitting at about 100,000 MT, which isn't bad. So yeah, I was just picking these guys up to add them back into my collection because their prices have cooled down a little bit uh, since, of course, they spiked massively uh, when the uh, Super Packs came out with all the high-rated players going into them. And, of course, that Zach Levine set moments of week five uh, was the one that really shot up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this new set. Like I said, I am a little bit disappointed um, that it's not a Spotlight Series set because, of course, then we actually get some challenges to play along with the actual new players. But everyone in this set is an Evo, including the reward right there, which is Bill Russell. So that's pretty cool. You know, you can't really complain uh, that. So let's go through these guys and take a look at who we have got. So we've got Andre Roberson coming in as a Sapphire. I imagine this guy is going to be next to useless. Um, he's got 14 gold badges, including, of course, Clamps, Defensive Leader, Intimidator, what you'd expect. But then offensively, he is going to give you absolutely nothing. 54 mid, 50 on the three points, a little bit of ball control. Decent, de not not even exceptional defense, but decent de defense, decent speed, and decent rebounding. Uh, if you want someone that is just going to be there for the defensive end, obviously Roberson is going to be good, but if you want someone who's going to give you literally anything on the offensive end, then he's definitely not going to be for you. So he is going to be discard value, I'd imagine. Uh, and then Michael Carter-Williams, again, I imagine he is going to be pretty damn cheap. But let's take a look at him, 21 gold badges, including quick draw. Uh, do we have anything else nice down here? Not really. Um, he's got a lot of badges, only bronze quick first step. 
He's got the, uh, well, look at that. No mid-range, no three-pointer. Got decent ball handling, decent defense, and decent speed. Um, but again, he is going to be a card that sells for absolutely nothing. So this is going to be good in terms of increasing our card collector level. Uh, we should be able to get the majority of these guys for reasonably cheap. Um, but yeah, in terms of actually adding players to our squad, sadly, uh, they aren't great. But Markel Fultz, let's have a look at this guy because he does have the Sapphire Moments of the Week card, which is pretty good. So let's take a look at this Ruby card. 17 gold badges, including Dimer, Contact Finisher. We have got Quick Draw on him as well. And he's got a 92 driving up, 84 mid, 79 three with a 90 driving dunk. He's got defense, he's got the ball handling, and he's got 91 speed. There we go. That is what I love to see. So as a Ruby card, he is fantastic. And of course, he is an Evo as well. So he will go up to the Amethyst level. That is a good card. And hopefully... He won't be too expensive. I imagine people have already evoed these cards up because the weird thing about these evo cards is they literally only take, they go, look, there's so many up at the Amethyst level already. They only need like one or two games, well, no, literally like one game to get up to their evo requirements, which is just ridiculous. So when he becomes an Amethyst, we get a range extender on him, okay, uh, and he gets a 91 mid and a 91 three. Uh, and that is it. So he gets a couple more badges, uh, obviously, and then his mid-range and three-pointer get boosted up quite significantly. But that is a really, really solid card. Very impressive for Markel Fultz right there. Um, even kind of comparable in terms of actual stats to that Baron Davis. Obviously, in terms of badges, Baron Davis is far and away better. But Markel Fultz, as a budget card, he is going to be really, really nice, uh, especially at that Ruby level, but definitely at the Amethyst one as well. So very nice card. Right there, we move on to DeAndre Jordan coming in. The first one with some Hall of Fame badges. He's got two pick and roller and pogo stick. As you'd expect with DeAndre, we're going to be seeing a lot of... Did they gave, they gave him quick draw? <laughs> like, what? Uh, he's got a 42 mid, so you're not going to be shooting with him anyway. 57 on the driver layup, so you are literally just getting rebounds. You're dunking it, and you're doing well on the defensive end. Speed is not there either, so... Not a crazy card. We can actually probably just take a look at all of these guys uh, at their final form. So when they are actually evoed up, as long as the auction house isn't glitched. So Andre Robeson as a ruby, hopefully, is going to be there. 2k, hello, servers, eventually. There we go. So Andre Robeson, when he is evoed, comes in at 89 rated. And would you look at that? Okay, so now we are talking. That is one hell of an evo right there. Oh my god. 84 driving layup, 90 mid, 88 three ball, and then he already has the driving dunk, he's already got the defense, he's already got the rebounding, and he's already got the speed, Jesus, that is going to be a really, really nice card, six, six foot seven at the shooting guard position, Andre Robeson, that is very, very impressive, uh, and then who else was the Sapphire, it was Michael Carter Williams, uh, and he is going to come in again at the Ruby level, uh, and let's see how ridiculous they've made this card. So again, 85 mid, 88 three ball. That's the only thing they've changed. Oh, what's going on there? That's the only thing they've changed. He's got 23 gold badges now. Uh, none of them look too different, or none of them jump out to me anyway. Uh, but still, pretty impressive. Uh, we already looked at Markel Fultz, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, we did. And then DeAndre Jordan. Let's take a look at him at the Amethyst level. Uh, and he comes in. There's only one of them up. Okay, so his might be a little bit harder. He gets Hall of Fame, Rebound Chaser, and Rim Protector. Not bad. They give him a 95 mid-range and a 69 three-pointer. What a 2K smoking. What is that? With a shoe and a coach, you can get that up to, like, the high 70s. On DeAndre Jordan, that's ridiculous. A 95 mid-range. And he goes up to, wow, okay, so they juice him with the boost there. 97 block, 95 interior D, and then 95 for the rebounding. 95 strength as well. Wow, okay, so this set, the Evo boosts are absolutely ridiculous. So, so far we've seen Andre Robeson, who goes from like 53 pointers to like a 90. Michael Carter-Williams, same situation basically. Markel Fultz as well is an absolute sniper. And DeAndre Jordan is apparently one of the best mid-range shooters in the game. Well, I don't understand 2K this year. It is something else. Next up, we've got Sean Livingston. We might as well take a look at them in the auction house because we can take a look at their Evo straight away. So, as a Ruby card, if it ever loads up... He comes in with the throw, <laughs> the throw that, that is, 6 foot 7, 29 gold badges, floor general, dimer, clamps, okay, looking really nice so far. Uh, what else we've got down here, stop and go, hot zone hunter and quick draw, and he comes in with a 94 mid-range, 86 driving layup, we've got a 70 driving dunk, thought that might be a little bit higher, but 84 ball handling, he's got decent defense and decent speed, and then, have they given him a 3 ball, it really wouldn't surprise me if they have, let's take a look. And it has gone up an 89 three-pointer. What are you doing, 2K? What is this? 
He goes up to an 89 three point. Is that literally the only thing? That is the only thing they boost on this card in terms of stats and in terms of badges. That is genuinely the only boost this card gets. Uh, he gets an 89 three pointer. What did that come up from? It was like 40, wasn't it? So it's at an 89 after the boost. And before boost, it's at 45. That is absolutely insane. It goes up 44. Wow, okay. So Sean Livingston uh, is suddenly a very viable point guard, uh, of course, with his height at 6'7". That is very, very impressive. Okay, Tony Allen and Hidu are the next people to take a look at. So Tony Allen, I believe these are Amethysts, I think. I know uh, Hidu is. I'm not sure about this Tony Allen. Let's take a look at the Amethyst level. Is this Evoed or is this Unevoed? It is Unevoed. So he comes in at six foot four, 99 offensive on the D, not offensive on the defensive end. Hall of Fame clamps and defensive leader straight out the gate. That is very impressive. Contact finisher as well and quick draw. 91 driving lap. Again, I can already tell those shooting stats are going to get boosted up high. He's got a driving dunk there at 90. He can speed boost. 97 perimeter D, 84 on the speed and then when we look at the diamond card because there will be some up i'm pretty confident in saying that uh well my confidence is dwindling with the amount of time this is taking to load come on 2k there can't be that many people on the servers right now that is causing it to be this slow can there there we go okay so it goes up to 95 rated and there we go as expected 92 mid and an 86 three pointer on Tolian, and again, that's the only thing they've changed apart from offensive consistency. Six Hall of Fame badges. I think he already had six, didn't he? Or did he have four? I don't know. But yeah, it doesn't really look like too much has changed. So it looks like pretty much with all of these cards in this set, they just get boosts to their speed. Um, not to their speed, uh, to their shooting, mid-range and three-pointer. And that seems to be the order of the day. Next up, we have Hidu Turkaloo coming in. So, of course, he's already got the Amethyst, which was a three-star Evo. And now we've got an Amethyst that starts an Amethyst. Wait, we've got an Evo that starts at the Amethyst and goes up to the Diamond level. So let's just filter this out onto the one we want. And let's take a look at this Hidu card. So I do know that his Evo requirements are just 20 steals. Uh, so obviously people have been putting up the Evo requirements on Twitter. I'm taking down all the ones I can. But even as an Amethyst, he comes in with Hall of Fame, Range Extender and Dimer. Uh, he's got Green Machine, he's got Quick Draw and he has an 84 driving lap. He's got a 93 mid with a 94 three ball. He can speed boost already. Not great defense and not great speed. But if we just take this guy one step higher to the diamond level, where, again, you only need 20 steals to actually get him here from the Amethyst, so uh, not too bad at all. He gets 29 gold badges. I think he gets a couple more, but he goes up to 89 on the driving lap, 80 driving dunk, and the defense goes up to 84 perimeter, 78 interior, and 86 speed, 86 speed ball, 86 acceleration. That is ridiculous. So... Hidu Turkaloo at the diamond level looks absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you only have to buy him at the Amethyst, and you basically got the diamond after a couple of games anyway. So he is a card that I'm definitely, definitely going to be looking to put into my squad. He is basically Lamar Odom, and it'll be interesting to see what it's done to Lamar Odom's price, to be honest. Uh, let's just take a quick look. I don't know why I filter it to diamond. He's the only one out there. I imagine it's made his price come down a little bit uh, because people will be selling him because, like I said, he is so comparable to that Hidu Turkaloo. Uh, and I think we have run, run with Odin for quite some time now. And I think we'll be able to get Hidu for quite a bit cheaper. If we can sell Lamar Odin for like 70k, I think we'll be able to buy Hidu for like 50k or something like that. Especially in this first week that the packs are out. Because there's going to be so many of him on the auction house as just an amethyst. So it looks like people are selling these up. Has he come down like past 65k? It wouldn't surprise me if he has. If he hasn't, I'll probably sell him. Um, but there we go. Yeah, everyone else is just panic selling their Lamar Odoms. God damn, he's down to like 55k. That is insane. Okay, so we're going to keep hold of him for the time being. He is a fantastic card. I'm in no rush uh, to actually get rid of him. So that is everyone uh, down here that we've taken a look at. Uh, and then we come on to the top four here and then DeAndre Ayton. So I know about the top four stats, but I do not know about this DeAndre Ayton. So he comes in again at the Amethyst level and does have one Evo and it goes up to the diamond. I don't know his uh, Evo requirements, but I imagine it'll be really nice and easy. Seven Hall of Fame badges, including back down Punisher. That's pretty good. Intimidator, defensive leader, quick draw, uh, the defensive badges that you would expect. And he comes in at the Amethyst level, the 79 driving layup. We've got 76 mid. I imagine they're going to get boosted. 95 block, 78 and 2 EG. What is that? <laughs> That's horrendous. Got good rebounding, but other than that, that DeAndre Ayton card is awful. Uh, but then when we take him up to the diamond level, uh, let's just take a look at what happens. There we go. Jesus Christ. 94 mid, 88 on the three-pointer. His defense doesn't get touched, though. So this card is a bit of a liability, not going to lie. Uh, so offensively, great card. Defensively, 
That is a big no-no from me. And then we come on to the big four. So Rondo, who was, of course, the poster for this, uh, uh, not Spotlight Series, New Year's promo, uh, which, again, just confused me. He comes in as a diamond, and you do need... Uh, what do you need for this? You only need to hit 33 pointers, uh, and then he goes up ridiculously in his stats. So uh, we'll actually just take a look at the pink diamond one. So I imagine people have done it already. They have. Uh, like I said, yeah, 33 pointers, really nice and easy. And at this pink diamond level, he has 14 Hall of Fame badges, including Quick First Step, Intimidator, Clamps, Defensive Leader, and Diamond. Like, that is literally every Hall of Fame badge you could want on a point guard. That is absolutely ridiculous. We come down here. I think he has, he does have Range Extender as well. He's got Quick Draw. A six foot one is the only thing that's a little bit of a problem. But look at that. 92 mid and a 90 three-pointer on Rondo with 92 primitive and 97 speed. I mean, these cards are absolutely insane. Uh, next up, we have DeMar DeRozan, and he comes in again. This card looks disgusting. So at the Pink Diamond level, the Evo for him is, again, just to hit 33 pointers. He does only come with a 65-3 as standard, I think, or it might be like a 70 or something, but it won't be too hard to get him done. 11 Hall of Fame badges. A standard, 28 gold badges, including clamps uh, and range extender at standard. And then at this, oh no, wait, this is, yeah, this is the pink diamond one. This is evo would one. Uh, and he comes in at the Evo level with a 93 three-pointer, 97 driving dunk, 90 perimeter D and 93 speed. Again, that card is absolutely ridiculous. Like, these cards are just so juiced. It is hard to believe. And then we have Gilbert Arenas coming in at the pink diamond level, who is a pink diamond Evo that goes up to another pink diamond level. Wait, what? He does. Does he not? Oh, have 2K not put him in? Okay, they haven't put him in the searches. That's really annoying. Can we just search for him by point guard? And then we go over to New Year's resolutions. This should work, hopefully. Uh, don't let me down, 2K. <laughs> well, I'd say that. It's not going to be out of this world if they do. If you actually look at the packs, they've got a Chris Paul on the uh, picture, which, of course, he's not actually in the set. So he's not in the packs. But, hey, why not put him in the cover of the packs? Because that makes sense. I don't know what's happening with the auction house right now. It's just not working. Uh, can 2K really not even have servers that withstand a small amount of people coming into this game? Because I refuse to believe that uh, a pink diamond Bill Russell is enough to actually get people on the game. So, god damn, look at that. 500k already on Gilbert Arenas. Now, the problem is uh, we'd have to scroll for so long, which I'm not going to do, uh, to find his Evos. Because, uh, of course, they only go up to a 98 pink diamond. He doesn't go up to a Galaxy Opal. But he comes in with 17 Hall of Fame badges, including Quick First Step and Diamond and Contact Finisher. So, really, really nice. In terms of his stats, 95 driving layup, 96 mid, 95 three, 95 driving dunk, 95 ball handling. Not much defense, but with his Evo, he does get defense. And not only does he get defense, he actually gets Hall of Fame clamps and Gold Intimidator and Gold Defensive Leader. So he gets some ridiculous badges uh, when he actually gets Evoed up. And then the final player in the set, I believe we just took a look at everyone. Oh, we didn't actually look at Bob Pettit. I don't actually know about his Evo requirements. I did get turned off by this card because I saw his speed. 66 speed. I don't know about that one, Chief. He's got great rebounding. Decent interior defense, or really good interior defense, uh, and obviously great shooting. Uh, but yeah, that uh, speed really did turn me off this card. But again, I imagine he evos up to a 98 pink diamond. He doesn't go to a Galaxy Opal, but I imagine his speed will be taken care of. And if you lock all of those in, you get a pink diamond Bill Russell, who actually I don't know if he evos up to a uh, Galaxy Opal. Let me just have a quick check. But what you need to do with him is hit 33 pointers, which... Let's just take a second to realise that he comes in with a 29 three-pointer as standard. Like, 29 as standard, and he goes up, uh, and you have to hit 33 pointers of it. He actually doesn't go up to a Galaxy Opal, so he only goes up to a 98 uh, pink diamond as well. But yeah, if you hit 33s with him with his 29 three-pointer, he gets a 90 three-pointer and a 90 mid-range. That is just, oh, what have 2K done? They've just thrown away any sort of realism in this game it is just all gone. Everyone in this set is apparently a sharpshooter. DeAndre Jordan with a 95 mid-range. Bill Russell with a 93-pointer. Like, I don't understand what they're trying to do to this game mode, but it looks like they're just taking it to where it was last year with Shaq uh, being speed boosted and hit three-pointers everywhere. So these guys are really cheap already. That's not a surprise. Like I said, this is great for increasing our card collector level. We should be able to pick up, I don't know, like... All of them down from Ruby and maybe even down from Amethyst for a reasonable price. We should be able to get these sapphires for like 1500 
Uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to do it today. Oh, there we go. DeAndre Jordan for 1,100. No. 1,300. Yes, there we go. Cool. And then Andre Roberson, uh, pick him up for 1,400. There we go. So there's a couple of them added already. And that gives us a chance to take a look at these guys' Evo requirements. Because obviously we know about the diamonds uh, and the higher, but we don't know about these guys. So we come down here to... DeAndre Jordan, and you need to make 20 free throws. He has a 59 free throw rating. Like, what are 2K doing? No wonder there was only one of them evoed up. That is horrible. Uh, definitely not going to be doing that. And we come down here to Andre Roberson. He got hit 10 three-pointers. He has a 50 three-point rating. Why are you doing this, 2K? Why are you doing this? Why are you encouraging people to shoot with people who should not be able to shoot? I don't understand that at all. That, that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, but anyway... Uh, we could do that in one game of rookie domination, maybe, or I might just buy him at the ruby level, because to be honest, uh, I don't know, actually, let's take a look at his prize at the ruby level, because, yeah, someone like him with a 53-pointer, if you go into uh, rookie domination, obviously, you're going to be able to hit those shots, uh, and you would be able to get that done in one game, but what does he sell for at the ruby level, because this might be a situation similar to the Hilu Turkley, if you guys remember way back, uh, well, I say way back, maybe like a month or so, when he needed to score 150 points in one game with Hilu Turkoglu, uh, obviously, that was pretty easy and doable. Um, but it meant you can make like 20k per game uh, because he was selling for that much so it doesn't look like this Robeson's going to have too much for a profit margin so don't think this is going to be worth it I don't know he is selling for like over 5k uh, just for hitting uh, what was it 23 pointers I can't even remember right now but yeah I don't know probably won't do that but again it just doesn't make any sense why make us do things with players that shouldn't be able to do things yeah 10 three pointers that is really easy to be fair that is uh, we could take him, uh, and I guess if these other cards actually have their same requirements, like Marco Hunter Williams, Marco Fultz, if their requirements are also to hit 10 threes, you could take all three of them into one game uh, and get all three of them done. Um, but out of this lot, who would I actually want to have in my squad? Well, uh, the Gilbert Arenas would be ridiculous, but he's going to sell for so much that at this point in the game, it's pretty much a given. I'm never going to get my hands on him. Rondo, uh, well, DeRozan would be insane. At the Pink Diamond level, he is a ridiculous... Ridiculous. So I'd definitely like to pick him up, but again, I think he might be a little bit too pricey. Rondo probably won't be too pricey, even at the pink diamond level, but um, a six foot one is a little bit of a concern for me. DeAndre Ayton, not too fussed about him because of his lack of defense. He do Turkle at the diamond level. Definitely, 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 definitely want to pick that guy up. And the same with Tony Allen, to be fair. He is a little bit undersized uh, at six foot four. You can definitely get away with playing him at the shooting guard position, though. And then let's take a look at the Hidu's price at the Amethyst level uh, and see what he is already down to. Because uh, we can just compare him to our Lamar Odom. Uh, and he comes in already, hopefully, around this price. Uh, okay, that is the New Year. <laughs> that is not the New Year's one. Uh, I did wonder why I just saw 18k right there. But he's definitely going to be a little bit more than that. Hopefully, his price will continue to come down over the next couple of days. Uh, and there we go. Already at 45k. God damn, that was a hell of a good guess. Uh, can we compare him to our Lamar Odom? We can. Okay, so let's put him at the diamond level. Uh, and let's compare. There's not going to be any for 45k, that's for sure. Okay, so Diamond Hidu is already under 100k, not a surprise. And then we compare him to our Lamar Odom. So, Lamar Odom's got a little bit of better driving layout, but Hidu definitely has the shooting on him. Plus 5 on the mid-range, plus 5 on this 3-pointer. Lamar Odom's got the dunking, plus 10 on that. Very similar uh, in the passing stats. On defense, very similar, uh, but Lamar Odom does have him on the interior D. He's got the better rebounding as well, but Hidu does have the speed as well. So both of these cards coming in uh, with some, well, look at that, 60 defensive consistency. That's not great. Um, so yeah, very similar cards. Each of them have a few things that they're better than the other. Uh, so I think for the time being, we'll probably just hold on to our Lamar Odom, but I can see this Hidu coming down in price very quickly. If he's already down 85k and he's only been out like an hour or so, uh, they are going to continue to tumble in price. So it's exciting. There are some good cards. It's just a shame we didn't actually get any new content. And will I recommend locking in for that Bill Russell? Hell no. Even though he gets a 90 mid and the 93 pointer, you're going to be spending so much on the Gilbert Arenas, on the Bob Pettit, DeMar DeRozan and Rondo. They are going to be expensive. And if they're not, then we'll definitely be picking one of them up over the weekend. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Let me know down below who you're most excited for out of this set. It's kind of a weird one because they are all Evos, but they might as well not be because you can do everything in one game. And if you can't do it in one game, it's going to be something like 20 free throws with DeAndre Jordan, which is just frustrating. So I don't know. It's very weird. Uh, the Evo requirements were way too much before today, and now they're just literally pointless. So uh, it seems like 2K have just gone from one extreme to the other. Uh, yeah, I just don't really understand what they're trying to do today. But anyway, let me know down below who you're most excited to play with. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. As usual, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.